Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a very, 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 very late August reading wrap up and I'm very sorry that it is so late. There are reasons for this. Um, my mum had an accident and she's back in hospital, she broke her hip. I'll go into more detail if you're interested in colouring chat which will be coming next Wednesday. Um, so if you've seen the uh, Whip in the Whips video, let me know which one you want me to colour in. So let's get on with it because I read a ton in August. I was on holiday um, to Tembe, so I always read a lot on holiday because obviously with a young child you can't stay out very late. So we tend to go back to the caravan and just chill. So I read... Twenty-two books in August. Now I'll admit two of them were short stories, so or, or short story collections. So that made it easier. But let's get going. So the first one I finished in August was It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Um, I gave it four stars. I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I know everybody says it glorifies domestic violence, but I actually didn't find that. I found that it was actually more of a way of explaining why women find it hard to leave domestic violence. Um, and uh, you know what happens when they do some people just, you know and, and Lily is a lucky one in the sense she got out and her husband wasn't so possessive and evil that he tried to keep her any way he could and didn't go after her and they, they're friends which is unusual I'll admit that but yeah I did actually enjoy it I'm, I must say then, even better, Lisa Jewell, five stars, then she was gone. This is the story of Ellie, who, when she was 15, went out and disappeared. Ten years later, her mother uh, starts a relationship um, with another man, who, uh, obviously, with a man whose daughter is the spitting image of Ellie. And Laurel is questioning everything that happened. Uh, what happened to her daughter? Where did this child come from? And it's absolutely fantastic. Lisa Jewell, you just can't go wrong with a good Lisa Jewell. I love Lisa Jewell. She's one of my favorite authors. Then Lucy Foley, The Paris Apartment. This tells the story of, what was her name? Uh, Jess. Jess is a bit of a troubled child. So she goes to uh, Paris to visit her brother, Ben. She goes to his apartment, he's supposed to be there, he's not, but when she goes in she finds blood on the floor and thinks something really bad has happened to him. So uh, as the novel goes on she starts uncovering the secrets of the people who live in this apartment block where her brother lived and um, yeah, it, it it was a bit drawn out, a bit too long, but still worth a full stars because it was still a good read. I find Lucy Foley is a good read. Um, I've read this one and the guest list now, is it the guest list? Yeah. And I've got the hunting party to go. So I am really enjoying these ones. So these are definitely worth picking up. My brother recommended this. I asked him where to start with Brandon Sanderson. Now, some people say not to start with this because it's his first book. So his writing style's not, in, uh, not got to up into... The best that it can be um, but Chris recommended this because it's a standalone not for much longer from what I gather because when he's finished the series he's doing now he's going to write a sequel and I do believe there is a short story called The Hope of a Lantress um, so this basically it tells the story of um, the region of Arlon um, Elantris was a beautiful place where people uh, were transformed into magic using demigods by something called the Shou Sh Sh Shyod? I can't pronounce it. But then something happened to the magic and the magic failed and Elantris starts to rot and the people who are touched by the Shyod become basically the living dead, almost like zombies. So anybody that gets like this is put away into Elantris and locked away because the Shyod still um, affects people in Arlon and it affects the prince, the crown prince, Rhodan. He has become a Lantrian, which in the old days would have made him a demigod, but because the magic's bad, it's turned him into this thing. However, his he is engaged to this princess who comes from another uh, area and she arrives to find her husband to be is passed away allegedly but she still 
um, is bound to the marriage contract from the time they're engaged she belongs now to Arlen um, so she is intrigued by Elantris um, and wants to find out more and inside Elantris Raiden is trying to build a better place for these people to live uh, to the point that he's trying to make them civilized again there is a thing that they are hungry all the time but when they hurt themselves they don't heal so to try and get stop them from hurting themselves um and to forget the hunger he encourages them to do things that normal people do like tent gardens and um, build walls and clean and he starts building a better Elantris of course the whole point is will they get the magic back obviously I you know, think I'm too but I left this book and I gave it five stars because it was just I loved it I loved it um Paul bought me for my birthday Children of the Dust this is by Louise Lawrence who wrote, wrote The Earth which which I read last year and absolutely absolutely adored it because it was set in, in the valleys and about Welsh folklore and stuff like that. So this one is set in the 80s and there is a nuclear war. So, excuse me, Sarah and her family are in their, are cooped up in the house. They've blocked all the light out. They've blocked all the doors so no air can get in. Basically, they've made it a bomb shelter to be, uh, keep them safe from the, the fallout. But what happens is, Obviously, they can't stay cooped up all the time. They've got to get rid of their waste. They've got to go out and look for food at some point. So the mother goes and the, the, the eldest daughter goes and they both get sick and the boy gets sick. But there is one younger daughter who does not get sick at all. So they bundle her up in a um, sort of radioactive suit made of plastic bags and take her to another place where the uh, owner also hasn't been affected by the fallout where they build a new future together um, and you have in the second part of the book it's really short you have two separate parts of the story so you've got these people who lived through the dust through the radiation and evolved with it and changed so they can live in this new nucleared war with the this girl being the really the last of the what we would call humans as we are now um, but they've evolved to deal with the hot the heat and, and things like that then you've got the government people who went underground into the bunkers now they're all right for the time being but eventually their technology starts to fade because they've got no way of maintaining it because eventually they're going to run out of all the bits that they need to do it and there's nobody building new bits so it's a really good book um, again it's five stars and it's how the old humans the ones stuck in the underground have to face that they are not the alpha anymore they are the anomaly and it's the people who have evolved to live within the radioactive dust within the, the you know the fallout areas they've evolved they are the people who are going to run the planet they are they have a new way of working mm. they work through telepathy etc etc it's so so good i absolutely loved this book i love louise lawrence's work it's absolutely brilliant then i read jack the ripper's whitechapel murder this is by kevin o'donnelly and based on the research of a couple named andy and sue parker this book really goes with the royal conspiracy to an extent and what they think they they think there's a conspiracy through it it was a very good read very very interesting um i gave it three stars because i don't think there was any royal conspiracy i don't think there was any cover-up i just think it was some random and we may never know it may well have been aaron kosminski but i don't think we'll ever know but it's still a good read and I like to read anything about the Jack the Ripper. Now, Lisa Jewell again, I read to The Third Wife. This one's a bit different. This is about a man um, who, do I know what his name is? Adrian, who basically is on his third wife. He's got children with his first two wives, not with his third. At this moment, they are apparently trying for a baby. And, <sighs> Everyone loves each other. The, the ex-wives are both friends, well, and with the third wife. The kids are all friends, but it's nothing as quite as what it seems. And his third wife um, gets drunk and is killed 
um, by a bus. She walks out in front of a bus. Uh, was it suicide? Was it an accident? Adrian has to investigate to find out what was really going on with his life and was it in his wife's life and is his life as good as he thinks it is or is he just some man who when he gets bored moves on to somebody else because he likes that feeling of new love you know it, it was a really really good one it was a four star got a lot more to go agatha christie the complete secret notebooks i have been reading this tome for a long long time basically this is how agatha christie um worked out her basically the plots of her books she had a load of notebooks and she'd jot things down it made me wonder about her notebooks did she just pick up a random one every now and again and something well, I'll write about that in there and then then put it down and then 10 years later pick it up again and write some more random notes because you'll see say a note for say sparkling side in book 10 and then there'll be something in book one and then there'll be something in book 13 it's really really weird instead of just using one book but it was fascinating to see how her mind would work and how she would carry on and and, and do it absolutely brilliant it's heavy though it's a big one bit of nostalgia for my childhood Enid Blyton's The Adventures of the Wishing Chair in which Molly and Peter go to buy their mother a present from an antique shop and discover this chair that grows wings every now and again and you can wish where you want to go and it will take you there they make a friend of a pixie I want to say named Chinky um very very sweet got lots of little short individual stories which tie into one big story which is obviously these kids that have the wishing chair lovely nostalgia four stars can't say better than that right the, oops, the first of the ebooks and i will try and put the picture up here it doesn't always work was a arc from net galley which they let me have for review and it's called murder in the dressing room by holly stars this is a story about well murder in the dressing room Drag queen, lady lady has been murdered with poison chocolates. Her protege, um, whose name escapes me, Misty, Misty Divine, um, discovers her dead. And she's wearing a dress that once belonged to Judy Garland, which was in fact stolen from a boutique in London. The police are more interested in um, investigating the disappearance of the dress rather than Miss, uh, Lady Lady's murder. So Misty Divine decides to investigate herself. When she is in drag, she is referred to as she. When Misty as her is, um, I can't think of his name, they are referred to as they them which is the first time I've read a book with the pronouns of they them and it was really really weird at first but I soon got used to it and I thought it was brilliantly done absolutely fantastic book I gave it four stars I can imagine my friend Phil Lee Thomas Wilmer um, playing Misty because uh, Misty is tall as is Phil in fact Phil's taller than Misty's supposed to be but I so totally could um, see him play Misty I could it would be great uh normally I try and, and see if there's any errors that I could find one thing that I wondered well how tall was Lady Lady because Judy Garland was only four foot eleven but uh Lady Lady was only about five foot anyway so that would work that would be fine I can let that go because <laughs> you know me I like to pick holes when I can but yeah that was a brilliant one next was abandoned a gold story by carol mcmahon um lisa has just split up with a boyfriend and has nowhere to go so a friend who has moved to the mainland new york says she can have her apartment on some island somewhere i can't remember where it is um the building is going to be renovated so her apartments she's still paying the lease but she can go stay there for free if she wants so she goes across there to only to find weird things happening the neighbor downstairs is a bit odd there's all sorts of strange things going on is the house haunted you'd have to read it to find out it's only a three star but it was short and it was good could be expanded into a full-length novel quite easily really really could um ah, well back to a, a normal book a proper physical book not, not a normal proper book because Kindle books are proper books and I love them. I finished The Other Berlin Girl by Philippa Gregory. This was a TBR jar pick. I did enjoy it. I thought it was a bit long. 
I hate Anne Boleyn after this. She was really horrible to her sister in this book, um, to Mary. Um, so basically, yeah, it tells the story of the other Boleyn girl, Mary, her sister, who had an affair with uh, Henry VIII when he was married to Catherine of Aragon and bore him two children. How um, Anne came over and stole his affections and became obviously his second wife who ended badly and at the end Mary's thinking I got a nice escape from this <laughs> I gave it uh, three stars I uh, know four stars it was it was enjoyable I would read more Philip Gregory I'm not big on massive historical fiction like this but I enjoyed that and I will will if I see any Philip Gregory pick them up because I did actually enjoy it most of the rest now apart from one are all Kindle books and I will try and put a picture up here if I can. Next one was these are all red on holiday. These things linger Dan Franklin. This was recommended by my friend Charlotte. Hi Charlotte if you're watching. Um, she's one of the Monroe gang and uh, she recommended this. So Alex's uncle raised him. He wasn't the nicest uncle and they sort of drifted apart. They were estranged. Um, and his uncle dies. Now Alex remembers when he was a child, teenager, with his girlfriend casting spell to try and raise the dead, sort of, to bring back the ghost of her brother who died in, in uh, the war, in one of the wars, to um, so she can talk to him again because she was very close to him. So Alex, wanting to apologise and make up with his estranged uncle, decides to repeat the, the spell. And he decides to do it on a lake water amplifies so he brings something forth not just his uncle and all bad things happen lots of bad things it's quite creepy in places his girlfriend's pregnant and oh some horrible things happen to them both i did enjoy it i gave it three stars because i felt it could have been better but it was still a really good read so basically with my star in five stars is exceptional four stars is amazing three is is good it's like average it should be the average and then two is mm, and one is bloody awful dnf well it says it says it all doesn't it so after that i read another short story collection which is haunted by willow cross these are short stories that are allegedly true that willow cross tells things that have happened to her it's i think it's free or it's free on unlimited i'm not sure it's worth a read it's a three star read there's nothing special i didn't find them particularly scary i like ghost stories to be scary it's autumn i want scary it's cold i've got my dressing gown on in the middle of the day um i've got some horror books ready for next week next month which is next week so great then i read another book by bi skinner afterlife in the attic i'm looking at my notebook while i'm doing this so molly fitzel has just passed her realtor exam in the US and she is about to show off her house however she is clairvoyant and psychic so all sorts of strange things happen so she goes to show this at uh, the house and um yeah there's a dead body in the attic and it's discovered by the people she's done the house to not a good start so they suspend a license though I'm not sure why because it's not her fault I think it's more because of her sister's potential involvement in the murder because the deceased person was her ex-boyfriend yes so molly is going to a get her license back and b find out who actually killed her sister's ex-boyfriend so her sisters can get out of jail <laughs> i love b i skinner's book they're really 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 good four stars definitely pick them up they're all unlimited most of them are all unlimited so definitely worth it one that's definitely an unlimited is calling time by adrian cousins this is book four in the jason apsley trilogy yeah he's just not doing a trilogy anymore he's just writing more books <laughs> it's 1994 and jason apsley is retired he's at the end of his you know he's not the end end of his life but he's retired living with his wife when suddenly a letter arrives from his future self oh yes however it doesn't just come on its own it comes with the jason who he replaced yeah now from what he understands jason the old jason can only reappear once he passes away so he figures out that sometime in the near future he's going to die in the 2000s um and then jason can do whatever he does however there's all sorts going on as usual we've got the crooks 
that we thought we'd lost. It's all good. Um, let's have a look. Yes, he needs to figure out what's going on. The police are on his tail as well because of this funny car that keeps turning up that gets wrecked and then it's perfect again. It's just so funny. They are such a good series. Please, please, please. If you like anything to do with time travel, go and check out Adrian Cousins. His books are fantastic. Absolutely love them. Um, next is a series I discovered called, it's been around for a while, there's a lot in the series, I've just started reading them, is the Ellie Jordan Ghost Trapper series um, by J.L. Bryan and in the first book uh, we meet Ellie who catches and removes ghosts, removes, removes ghosts from various houses. She's going to investigate an old mansion which has been bought by this couple who want to turn it into a bed and breakfast, you know, hotel. This is down in, in I think it's Savannah, Georgia, it's that sort of area, so lots of ghosts, we like that. Um, and there is the a ghost of an old woman who opens the doors, tells them to get out, is scaring their daughter. So Ellie goes in and investigates and they trap the ghost. Unfortunately, this ghost isn't the problem. This ghost is warning them of something else that's in the house. On trapping that ghost, the rest of the ghosts are re released and cause mayhem. So she has to go and retrieve the original ghost <laughs> to go and help catch the rest of them. Brilliant. Four stars. Absolutely loved it. Brilliant series. I've read, I think, four of them now, and I've got two more already downloaded, ready to read soon. Um, next one in the series is called Cold Shadows, and this time she is investigating uh, a ghost children and their nasty father. So this, this woman is being, and her husband and her child, children, are being haunted by the this ghost. Her son is being haunted by two ghost boys who he befriends. Her husband has emphysema, he's very very ill. There is a swamp pond in the garden that shouldn't be there that just keeps reappearing. Um, so Ellie Jordan goes in to investigate and she basically uh, finds out that their father was very nasty and abusive and from what I understand, he, if I remember right, he, he killed them and, and, and their mother the mother was killed in the pond, which is why the pond's still there and there's damp in the house, hence the emphysema because it's all the mould. And then the little girl hid in his filing cabinet and died, from what I remember. I've read so much since then. And it's, it's really sad, but it's also really good. And Ellie and Stacey go in, but Stacey's her sidekick and uh, sort it out. It's really, really good, another four star. And the third one I read, is The Crawling Darkness. Um, this is a house has been split into four apartments. Um, Ellie is called in as there is an evil spirit to terrifying a child. This is an entity she had met before with her boss who is in a wheelchair because of this entity. Mm, nasty. And it moves from house to house in this new sort of area. So um, in the top flat you've got a brother and sister, the brother's a firefighter and then there's another woman who's a bit surly in one of the other flats and the other flat is um, lived in by a Mr Grey who nobody ever sees. This one was really clever, I really enjoyed this um, and you need to, watch, to read it to find out the whole story because I think this character, this sort of, this house has a portal in it and I think this one's going to come back later in future books but it is so good. Another one, um, Adrian Cousins again, is Death Becomes Them. This is a sort of time slip thing. Um, so Terry uh, died in 1981 after having a fling, yeah, in bed with a lady named Dina. Dina has been killed in a car crash in the present day and this time they've got to help their son. Previously it was to help his daughter, now they're helping their son, um, who's a bit of a dick really. He He's left his, step, his stepfather, signs over his business and for some idiotic reason he signs over to this girlfriend he's only known for a while and she does a runner. Of course she does because it's all a scam. So Terry and Dina are going to try and find out what happens. His father meets another girl, meets a girl I wonder if it's the same one. Gets married and ends up dead in America. But he also comes back as a ghost, so that's okay, because he can take his revenge on the nasty girl. There you go. 
So yeah, that was a full start. That was another good one. Adrian Cousins, can't fault him. Always good stories. Another time travel type book. Jason Ayers, again, brilliant writer. Go check out Jason Ayres' books. This one is The Time Bubble. This is a series. I've only read the first one, but I will be trying to pick up the rest of them at some point. So two children discover a time bubble in a tunnel. The tunnel has been built recently to go underneath the new HS2 link, which is a very fast rail link that's supposed to be being built, but they're not going to build it as far as they want to because of the money. So as usual, the North gets over by governments. And I'm not even from the North. Anyway, so basically what happens is they're in the tunnel world, but this person goes into this particular area, disappears, then comes back uh, a second later. Now, every time somebody goes through it, the time doubles. So this person went through, they were gone for a second. Next person is two seconds, then four, then eight, and so on. And the time gets longer and longer. So this is a problem. So they tell a teacher and this teacher has the answer. But I'm not going to tell you the answer because I want you to go and read it because I think these books are brilliant. Jason Ayres has done a good series of time travel books as well. There's a lot of time travel going on this at the moment and I'm loving it. But the last book I read in the month of August was Stephen King, Eyes of the Dragon. So this was a present from Chris for my birthday, yay. The king is dead, murdered by an unusual poison. No, it's all right, he's still alive and he's living in America like he normally does, writing more books. That's all I would say about the king. Um, yeah, so basically uh, King Roland has been murdered and blame is placed on his eldest son, Peter. Peter is a lovely bloke. Everybody loves him and he loves his father. He did not do it. You can know who did it because you're told from the beginning and that was the magician flag who's evil He's an evil um, person or entity that's been around like time immemorial um, And he wants Thomas Peter's younger brother who's a bit wishy-washy on the throne because he knows he can convert him control him so Peter is placed into this tower called the Needle, which has only got one entrance in and out other than if you want to jump out the window, which is a long way down and you die and um, he comes up with a plan to escape, but it's going to take him a very, very long time. Um, friends he has met, made over the years will help him in their own way as and when they can't. But he only has one chance to escape. I gave it four stars. I loved it. It was a bit of a slow start. It's a slow burner to get going. <coughs> but this is King at his best. Sometimes his not so horror ones, his fantasy ones, are better and I've loved I love all his books I've read so many Stephen King's I still haven't even touched the side of the barrel I love a bit of Stephen King and this this fantasy you know absolutely brilliant absolutely loved it so those are all the books I read in August I will try and get September's video out earlier I hope just simply because I'll have more time yeah and why will I have more time I don't know but I will anyway I plan on getting it done a bit earlier now things are settling down so yeah that's all the books I read in August it was 22 it was a very good reading month I am something like six six seven books ahead on my reading challenge which is great um so I can slow down a bit now and uh read some bigger books can't say that I have but I'm just enjoying them I'm looking at books now <laughs> this room's full of books as you can see behind me there are three bookcases, but in front of me there are another three bookcases. <laughs> ah, this is just the Marilyn stuff. That is, uh, there's more downstairs and, and more in the other... Uh, yeah, there's books everywhere in this house, I must admit. We do read. Jennifer's reading is coming on lovely. We have got a, a little plan now so that she reads a page of a book every night. So we're reading Horrid Henry at the moment. So she has a book from school and she reads... We read that on a Tuesday night, goes back on a Wednesday. So... That day we don't read a page from her Horrid Henry book, but tonight we will be reading a page and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you soon. Bye everybody.